As competing demands for water have grown in Canterbury and as dairy farming has increased, irrigation has come under the spotlight. But it's been part of Canterbury farming for more than a century and really took off in the 1940s with the completion of the Rangitata diversion race. Farmers like Graham Robertson have grown up with irrigation. Well, I'm third generation on the Canterbury Plains and uh, on a, what was a mixed cropping farm, some sheep, a few cows and some crops. We got quite involved in my farming career with more intensive cropping and then about 10 years ago we diversified in part of the farm into dairying and that business has grown a bit over the last decade. The Rangitata Diversion Race takes water from the Rangitata River and carries it 67 kilometres at about 30 cubic metres of water a second. Still New Zealand's largest irrigation project, the RDR supplies three irrigation schemes that together bring water to 66,000 hectares. It's, well, it's over 50 years since I started farming and at that time irrigation was thought of as a, an insurance policy so if we got a really dry year then a bit of irrigation kept some feed for the sheep and farms were not fully irrigated they maybe uh, were half or two-thirds irrigated and that was deemed to be sufficient but over the years the importance of irrigation with high input and high output protection systems um, irrigation has become much more important and the means of application of water has changed over the years. So we've gone from flood irrigation through uh, travelling irrigators, rotor rainers and guns and so forth. But the big breakthrough in the last 10 years has been the use of um, centre pivot irrigation. And the advantages there are very even distribution. And we're using about half as much water probably less than half compared to a border dike flood irrigation system and, uh, and guns and rotorainers. They are just so incredibly efficient. There is a conflict between the environmental use of that water, keeping water flows for fishing and wildlife and extracting it for agriculture. And so the answer there is that uh, we are going to increasingly store water. There's a lot now stored in farm ponds, uh, large reservoirs and so forth. And this means that water can be harvested at peak times of the year when the rivers are in flood and uh, used later and during dry periods. If we are to continue farming, we have to meet uh, environmental regulations and objectives that uh, we, we can't pollute, we can't um, destroy environmental values. And so farmers now are extremely conscious about maintaining environmental um, standards. And that's, that's an absolutely massive change in the last 50 years.